Lisa, great to see you. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us on our videocast. Thank you very much. Really appreciate being here. Being here. Well, we're excited to, to learn from you. Why don't you share with us your background? Sure. Uh, I've been uh, an educator for a lot of my professional career. I've been involved in education space for, uh, well, since 2012 and 13. Fell in love with uh, the employability side with it because I was uh, working within a girls' school and noticed that there was a gap between opportunity and talent. And I really wanted to be involved with uh, helping uh, and assisting uh, early talent to find roles. And that sort of led me through a journey of finding apprenticeships uh, where I was actively involved in the apprenticeship space for about uh, six to seven years. And then I uh, sort of in in that period of time i got an understanding of or i tried to look for what was happening within the future of work and skills so in 2019 i wrote a blog 2019 or 20 i think i believe it was about how ai will change the future of work uh, i wrote it i did a bit of research wrote it and then i left it i didn't really think much about it uh, but i knew that i uh, part of the future of work had to involve some form of automation, some form of uh, data capture and the ability to use data to make data driven decisions, because with adequate data, you can make very good informed decisions. And I knew that, but that was largely involved in the diverse inclusion space. And when I spent a lot of a portion of my, my career in diverse inclusion space, I noticed that making decisions based on uh, what you see rather than what you know is what was apparent. Whereas if you make a decision based on what you know and having clear facts and figures, because statistics don't lie, uh, then you're able to make very good informed decisions. And then, uh, uh, so to cut a long story short, I, I ended up going to Saudi Arabia to a tech conference and I saw a uh, AI was everywhere, everywhere, everybody was talking about it. And it was probably a month or two after GPT was made public. Uh, so a lot of people seen the, the true benefits of generative AI. And I, it was then that I saw a, an opportunity to harness the, uh, a, a, the gap between people's understanding of AI and skills. And me being a skills person, I knew that if anything, it has to relate back to something I'm passionate about, which is on, which is giving uh, the opportunities to those, so, so training and skills. And that's kind of where I thought I could actually have an impact. Uh, and ended up setting up something called the AI Working Skills Forum, which was there as a discussion platform to really understand the impact of AI on the future and working skills. And that led to the genesis of the AI Work and Skills Forum, which uh, so the AI Work and Skills Academy, which is what we're, uh, I'm currently leading on, which is the training uh, side of our uh, brand, uh, training people in sort of data and also training people in early uh, foundation level uh, of AI to ensure that every single single individual within a, a workplace has the ability to understand the impact AI will not just have on their jobs and what their role will look like, but also utilizing the technology to empower their work. Mm. Congratulations on your award being a, a, a champion for um, people who are seeking work and particularly in the apprenticeship space. So well done. Congratulations on that. Thank you very much. That was this time last year. I, I won the uh, apprenticeship champion of the year uh, which was a good uh, a, a, an honor to win such an award and a prestigious award as well mm, that's fantastic in New Zealand uh, where I'm based apprenticeships have always had a, a really core place in developing people for industry creating pathways for people to learn skills within a work environment rather than a classroom environment and the um the emphasis on it has changed over time and different governments come and go in terms of their priorities. But I think it's a very, very important part of developing the capacity of people to work in a nation. And with AI, I'd just like to know from you and what you've seen and what you're planning and what you're promoting and sharing, 
what are some of those key understandings and key skills that regardless of the industry, apprenticeships and those moving into work really need to, to grasp, to hold, to be competent in? I think competency, as you as you sort of your final word was uh, uh, competent. Competency is a very important aspect of it. Uh, uh, the way I liken um, very early understanding of AI is that of learning very basic digital skills, and it's getting somebody who's probably not had much experience with AI or no experiences with AI to understand the fundamentals, the core fundamentals of what it is and what it can do. So we've had traditional AI, which has been around for a very long uh, time, where you train, um, uh, we use machine learning to train models to create outcomes, et cetera, or to spot trends, et cetera. Uh, but this is different. This is about creating content. This is about uh, using generative AI to uh, create new ways of working, whether that be through learning, whether that be through marketing, whether that be through uh, legal, whether that be through text, et cetera, et cetera. So it's giving individuals the, 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 I would say, the literacy to empower them to do their jobs much more effectively, efficiently, and productively. So let's imagine someone who is in administration in a, in a business or a school or an organization in an administrative role. What are some of those competencies that they should have to really leverage generative AI? Very much basics based on each role, but let's just use an administrative administrative a role. Prime prime example is paperwork. It's reducing uh, not necessarily the 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 amount of paper you do. Well, yeah, reduce the amount of paper you do, but the the way you capture data, the way you capture data, and the way you use that data to understand the understand your um, your audience. So what was the example you gave? You gave an example of a school administrator, was it? Yeah, school or in a small business. Yeah, of course. So let's use let's use a school uh, uh, environment. A teacher may want to understand which characteristics of individuals are making progress and which are not. So they can use that data to make, to get an understanding of who is and who isn't making that um, a progress. Similarly, when you have that information, now that information, you don't necessarily need AI for. You can just see based on grading. But what you want to be able to use AI for is to spot trends. To spot trends, to see how how and why, what is it, what is it about in certain individuals that they're not making progress? And then AI can come in and have a look at it, the, the, the data you present, and it can then produce a result, guidance on what you can or should or advise on what you can and should do in a circumstance to assist the development of those individuals. Mm. Now, it's important to note here, and I, I, I add a slight caveat here, is that, and this is where the ethical side will come in, is to not solely use those tools, those AI tools, as a, a be all end or solution it requires the teacher's experience knowledge experience to be able to use that information to apply in the best way possible for those students because that's where the the the, the wisdom of the, the the teacher can be can be used to apply to those uh, to those scenarios yeah, a lot of the training that we're doing with schools and educators and small businesses uh, particularly is looking at what are those novel solutions that we may have missed, those strategies or resources mm. we could apply in a situation. But it does take the human. It does take the human to look around at the Indeed. context we're going to deliver that. And so that, that's a really good point that you raise. With the apprenticeship, um, the apprentices that you're talking with about AI and exposing them to the opportunities. What are maybe two, two skills that maybe high schools could develop in high school students so that when they move into apprenticeships, they're more ready for this? Basic data skills, basic data awareness of data skills, and then just general uh, knowledge of what AI is. 
or general literacy, literacy uh, AI literacy. Uh, now, this may mean understanding what a large language model is, what a, what a, a machine learning uh, what machine learning is, what a natural language processing is. These basic terminologies, just having awareness of what it means, because we all know what word processing means. We all know what uh, some of the information, that, some of the things that we already know from digital digital skills that we've already learned, and particularly it's an opportunity to understand the core fundamentals before we see rapid development beyond what we have now. Because we are very early in, still very early in what uh, AI can offer. And we have to remember also, uh, a lot of people are still not able to access basic tools or, or basic information regarding AI because it's very, still slightly expensive than what people can, what it can be. So eventually the cost will come down, more people, we will be able to access it. And the, the ability to for more people to access it means that there needs to be a basic understanding of AI literacy. Right. Yeah, that term um, digital literacy has been for a while, around for a while. So they're around that AI literacy, the vocabulary, the core understandings of what it is. Um, do you see... AI making decisions in organizations? Very much depends. I uh, did a, uh, a LinkedIn post that's gone out today on how, for example, the, the role of the bank advisor will change uh, with AI. And it's, it, as you sort of mentioned earlier, it's about using these tools to, to make the, uh, help you make the decision, not necessarily make the decision. So it's about how you use these tools, not what you use these tools for. That makes a difference. Right. Okay. Um, there's a tool called Dante, Dante AI, which I've been using and putting documents in there and building knowledge bases and then asking questions so I can actually talk not only to our document, but a range of documents in a particular area around pedagogy. Um, particularly around counselling as well, or counselling theories for people that have been through trauma, for trauma-informed care. And it, I find that really, really valuable for pulling together information and concepts and weaving together a unified response. Are you finding that schools, businesses, government organisations are doing that, are creating knowledge bases on documentation? It's a very important question. We it just announced today that the government, our government, uh, the British government, is looking at how to open source data in in regards to, uh, in this sort of AI area. There is a lot of uh, challenges, particularly from data protection perspective, particularly from um, where you source that data from. So there is a lot of um, conversations around it. I think there's there's also an, an innate fear of giving people's data away and using that data to be able to make data data driven decisions. Uh, you can look at the example of healthcare, or you can look at the example of education, where you've got very personal data, but some of that data can be used to enhance the progression of a of a student or the the health of a, a patient. There needs to be a much more wider conversation about data and, and how data is used uh, to be able to use to be able to use data to make data driven decisions. Uh, I think we are not far away from having a much more widely accepted uh, role for open source data, particularly where it, where it, where it utilizes people's data. Right. Well, Issa, thank you very much for your time. I know you have a tight schedule, so I really appreciate you doing this for us. If people which wish to reach out to you and engage with you, what's the best way for them to contact you? Yeah, sure. I'm uh, on, uh, our website is aiworkingskills.com and my uh, sort of social handles are uh, Issa Mutlib, so it's I-S-A-M-U-T-L-I-B. Uh, may also commend you for the work that you're doing in pushing the agenda around uh, AI in education and uh, amongst educators, it's so critically needed. We see we are in a we are in a, a, a effective a revolution, and uh, people that are able to drive this conversation as early as possible 
will be the trailblazers in this uh, space. And uh, we, myself, you, we need to support each other. We all need to support each other to ensure that every student is provided with the right information, but also that learning and learning is accessible to everybody with equal opportunities, with equal op with e access to uh, the right information, advice and guidance around AI. So I commend you for the work that you're doing. Thank you so much. You have a great evening.